During the Second World War, there were many acts of resistance and defiance against the Nazis and Adolf Hitler. Across Nazi-occupied territory, groups such as the Partisans rose up to fight the enemy. However, with every successful act came huge reprisals carried out by the Nazis on the people living in a certain area. For example, if a resistance group fired upon the Germans, then they would simply liquidate and carry out a massacre of an area or a village. This brought groups such as the Partisans into conflict with other resistance groups, as the cost of reprisals sometimes was too high. Different cities had their own resistance, they would fight against their occupiers and enemies, but many of these were not successful. Today we look at the story of Masha Bruschina, a teenage girl who was active in resisting the Nazis, however at the age of just 17 she was brutally executed. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Maria or Masha Bruschina was born in 1924 and she lived in Minsk with her mother, who was a manager at a book trade office of a publishing house. As a young girl, Masha was very learned, and she studied books a great deal, and was a rather studious child. Within her schooling she stood out above her peers, and in December 1938, a local newspaper, the Pioneer of Belarus, published a photo of Masha, with the caption, Masha Bruskina, the schoolgirl of the 8th grade in school number 28 in Minsk, she has good and excellent grades in all of her subjects. It was clear Masha had a big future ahead of her and she graduated from school in 1941 at the age of 17. Masha had also been working as a youth leader for the Young Pioneers, a group linked to the Soviet Union, where children learned different skills and attended summer camps. This organisation was linked to communism and by the 1930s the Pioneers were promoted as great examples of a socialist future generation. During World War II, the group contributed to the war effort, and thousands gave their lives in battles as military soldiers, and also in the resistance efforts against the Nazis. Pioneers also helped on the home front in Russia, in fighting but also in working to keep the Soviet Union going. She was an ardent communist, who was also a prominent member of the Minsk resistance, despite being just a teenager. With Belarus, the Nazis quickly occupied the country. The occupation began on the 22nd of June 1941 with Operation Barbarossa and it ended in August 1944 as the Soviets pushed towards Germany. It is estimated that during the German occupation over 1.5 million civilians were killed which included around 550,000 Jews in the Holocaust. A Soviet partisan movement did emerge within Belarus as the groups hid out in the woods and swamps and tried to disrupt the Nazi plans. They destroyed railway tracks, communication wires, took out fuel dumps and ambushed Axis soldiers. Different acts of sabotage took place within Belarus, but the partisans inside the country were dealt with rather severely by the Germans. Groups such as the Derlevanger Brigade were tasked with wiping out groups of resistance and then punishing those in the local area. Derlevanger in particular was fond of striking fear into the hearts of the locals by after resistance had occurred, rounding up civilians in a barn, burning the barn and then shooting anyone who tried to escape. Masha Bruschina stayed during the Nazi occupation within Minsk, her hometown, as the Germans quickly took the city. One of the first things the Nazis did was round up 100,000 local Jews into a small and overcrowded ghetto in the city. The Minsk ghetto was known for horrific conditions and Jews were kept here until they were sent to concentration camps or they simply perished or were killed. Many were massacred at the camps or by firing squads, but many others succumbed to a lack of food, disease and poor conditions. After staying in the ghetto for a number of weeks, Masha managed to escape and went into hiding on the Aryan side of Minsk, an area where those who weren't Jewish were living. She dyed her hair and took on the persona as a Russian girl named Anya, and she joined the local resistance. They were planning to liberate a group of 15 wounded and imprisoned Soviet officers from a prison hospital. Masha Bruskina then volunteered to work in the said hospital, which had been set up in the Minsk Polytechnic Institute. It had been established as a place to keep in prison Red Army soldiers, and Masha regularly worked shifts on the wards, caring for the wounded soldiers. She tended to them for a short while, however would go further in this role. She smuggled in medicine, civilian clothes and false papers to those Soviet soldiers. What would happen is once these were passed to the prisoner, 
they would simply get changed, leave the hospital with their false papers, and head back to the resistance. The breakout was planned for mid-October 1941, however Masha was advised herself to leave Belarus and Minsk, as she was seen as just a child. Masha refused to leave her friends and the resistance behind, however it would all go wrong. A patient told the Germans what Bruschina was doing, and she was betrayed, and she was quickly arrested on October 14th 1941 by soldiers from the Wehrmacht 707th Infantry Division. After being arrested, Masha was brutally beaten in jail, and was even tortured, in order for her to give over the names of her fellow resistors. She revealed absolutely nothing to the Germans, and allegedly even maintained her sense of humour saying, in any case there's no chance I'll die of starvation. Whilst in prison she wrote to her mother, I am tormented by the thought that I have caused you great worry. Don't worry, nothing bad has happened to me. I swear to you that you will have no further unpleasantness because of me. If you can, please send my dress, my green blouse and white socks. I want to be dressed decently when I leave here. Masha Bruschina was sentenced to death for her crimes and plotting. However, to send a strong message to the rest of Minsk, the German soldiers and forces would conduct a horrific execution, an act of humiliation. The Germans wanted to scare the local population into staying away from resistance activities against their occupiers, and for this Masha Bruschina was paraded in front of a huge crowd. She was taken into the streets of Minsk and a placard was placed around her neck that read in German and Russian, We are partisans and have shot at German soldiers. This was not true, and other members of the resistance were also forced to wear similar signs. After being paraded in front of the crowd, she was taken to her place of execution. It was said by a member of the crowd, Before noon I saw armed German and Lithuanian soldiers appear on the street. From over the bridge they escorted three people with their hands tied behind their backs. In the middle there was a girl with a signboard on her chest. They were led up to the yeast factory gate. I noticed how calmly these people walked. The girl did not look around. When they stopped, the fascists started knocking on the door of my neighbour's house, asking for a chair, but she got scared and did not open the door. In a while I saw Germans carrying a stool from the factory weighings booth. The factory gates were wide open. The officer threw a rope onto the crossbar and made a loop. The first one led to the gallows was the girl. So Masha Bruschina, along with two other men, one being a 16-year-old boy, was taken to be hanged in front of the Minsk Crystal Yeast Brewery and Distillery Plant. She was placed on the stool which had been hastily gathered by the German soldiers, and a witness then said of the execution. When they put her on the stool, the girl turned her face towards the fence. The executioners wanted her to stand with her face to the crowd, but she turned away, and that was that. No matter how much they pushed her and tried to turn her, she remained standing with her back to the crowd. Only then did they kick away the stool from under her. So even until the very last, Masha was resisting and refusing to give in to her Nazi occupiers as they forced her to face the crowd. Her body remained hanging there as a clear message with the plaque around it for three days in a statement to the people of Minsk. Masha Bruschina was just 17 years old. For years after her execution, Masha Bruschina was known as the Unknown Girl. Today a memorial marks the site of her execution, however sadly the rest of her family were killed inside the Minsk ghetto during World War II. Today she is remembered in history alongside other young women such as Lepa Radic, who stood up to one of history's most evil regimes, the Third Reich. At the heart of this story yet again was a teenage girl of just 17, who was executed in barbaric fashion at the hands of the Nazis. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.